A huge part of what we do is to make sure that when you pick up that menu and read it, that you are assured that all the ingredients on this menu will be of the best. And we've done all the legwork, so we don't need to write, this egg was laying at eight o'clock this morning. That should be taken for granted. Everything we buy here is considered checked, tasted, and ensured to be of the best. Ishmael, take those two. Two bacon, two one chips. Working with the amazing producers that we have the great luck and fortune to work with ensures that. Yeah, five of them, please, JK, as soon as you can, lovey. Well, today we are in Park Hill Farm in Appledore in Kent. When did I first come to Park Hill? Must have been over 20 years ago when I left Alistair Little, sadly, as all good things must come to an end, to begin the next part of my life as a head chef. And I felt it very much a part of my job to go and see and speak to the producers where they were. And so coming down to Park Hill was a great adventure. I have a very urban life. I live in Hackney and I cook in Soho. And you come to this very serene, calm spot where nature is allowed to be itself alongside growing some of the most spectacular herbs and plants and salads um, I've ever had. Jeremy! I think Francis has this extraordinary quality of being not only a unique person because she is a gardener who loves growing, there's nothing original about that, but she pioneered the salad as we grew to know and love it. It's barely changed. <laughs> the British only really knew soft green lettuces, which I adore, um, but the soft green lettuce does not translate into a restaurant salad. Who said, well, I can do that at home. And so the plate of ham with a little green salad on the side with a cucumber and the tomato wedge um, was fast coming to its conclusion as the dish de nos jours. Oh, wow. I like a few. There was an interest and an excitement to other things, mustard leaves and herbs that really we hadn't seen before and didn't know what to do with. And a lot of lore had been lost along the way. And so finding out about that was a brilliant time for experimentation. This is the one they call donkey pepper. <laughs> we found more and more that it wasn't about experimenting. It was just using it as it was. And the great thing with Frances is she was so learned in her lore that she could tell you what was needed. Oh, well, the flavors from here are extraordinary. She would do this brilliant news sheet once a month for each season as the plants came into, you know, flower or leaf or whatever it was they were supposed to do. And it was extraordinary. You know, the, the learning curve was amazing. And more and more and more it became about less and less and less. There you go. And I love it. That's extraordinary. It's just so nice, isn't it? Some of the polytunnels are in less good shape than they were. But there aren't seven people running this as they were. I mean, this is a woman in her prime um, and a lad doing his best to keep up a rather wonderful project that against a vastly changing, fast, furious paced commercial world is extraordinary. Robin's a rather wonderful character. It's not for everyone, this life. You really need to want to do this like with all things associated with food as a rule. And he brilliantly persevered as a one-man band when Francis retired. So not all the tunnels could be kept up, but brilliantly, he managed to keep up with us beautifully as if nothing had happened. The thing I like so. about it is when the seeds go black, and you can grind them and they smell of black pepper. <laughs> It's quite sturdy, that plant. Oh, yes, it's not only sturdy, but it's an invasive thug. It's a perennial mm. again, you see. Now, this is the triquetrum garlic, or three-cornered leek is its other English name. It's much nicer than the flat-leaved wild garlic. Yeah. It's like the difference yeah. between chives and onions. Yes, interesting. Very. It's kind of... In I'm that, delicious. Yeah. I'm, very, I'm very keen on it. Appledore is one of the very few places I deal with where we make no requests at all. This is the yeah. green one. The more familiar, yeah. Take that. Robin asks us what okay. we would like, and I say, well, more of that would be great, you know, whatever herb it is, or a leaf, or salad. But generally, it has always been, you don't know what you're going to get, and that's what we truly loved. Pop those in there. Right, we'll go down to the walled garden and find my other herbs. Oh, yes, the marjoram of memory serves. But I love. 
particularly coming here because you can wander along and just pick three cornered garlic and margarine that has a flavour that you thought is, you know, you have to go to Italy to get this. It's salsos, yes. And what I always wanted was a garden where all the weeds were edible. <laughs> I'm getting that. You have to go to a far flung reach of Europe to find this or further afield. And it's all growing here, you know, and perfectly naturally, perfectly happily, not with any great fuss or fanfare. Um, and it's just in a little, little corner under a bush or under a stone or beside a bench or, I mean, it's remarkable. And the flavours, you know, are clean and bright and pure. And I think that's what I treasure most about coming here. We want to try it with a lot of different combinations, don't we? Yes, as many as possible. Yes, right. A voyage of discovery. You see my deadly nightshade? God, yes. Not anybody you don't like. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> we do almost that.